Hi, welcome to this ESCO software solution demonstration series. In this episode, we will be covering specific use cases in Truckfill. All participants have been muted, and at the end of this demonstration, we will unmute for Q&A. My name is Bart Mearshart, and I will be your host today. In a previous episode of Truckfill, we looked at some standard functionality. As you might remember, we really focused on the different calculation settings and we played around with loading rules to influence how these different products will end up in the truck. Two of these load wizards we did not cover, which was the single product fill wizard and the truck container editor wizard. We'll have a look at those. In today's session, we'll also look at how we can customize or automate, I should say, a truck fill starting from an Excel spreadsheet. And then last but not least, I'll show you how you can customize some of these reports coming out of truck fill. So let's get started with the single product fill wizard. So notice uh, right off the bat here, if I select the single product fill wizard, most of these options get grayed out. Also, if I have multiple uh, products in here and I would start to calculate, I would get an error message indicating that only one product is allowed in the analysis. So for this, um, we are going to remove the first three, which is a standard box here. If I double click, remember you can visualize and see the dimensions um, of this product. So let's cancel this. Let's go ahead and hit the delete key on that one and confirm, delete the tray and the fridge, and we'll keep the pallet load. So again, to show you that, this is what that pallet load looks like. And you might remember also from a previous um, session that we have the possibility to add products as well as import pallet loads from our other uh, CAPE software. So with that here, um, you can see that uh, I have created in CAPE Pack a variety of different pallets right here. I exported those. Uh, you can see how we do that in a previous demonstration. And then uh, you can import those here like so. Uh, getting a little air on that one. No worries. Let's go back to truck fill. So that's how uh, we are able to import those. So again, let's uh, go ahead and delete these and we'll keep this specific palette. And we set the calculation setting to single product fill. Um, the current container is a small 20 by 8 uh, by 8.5, which is, uh, you can see the dimensions, the weight, and the height uh, right here. So for now, let's use that. So if we click on the Calculate button, seconds later, we can see the load in that truck. So not very efficient, as you can see here. So things to consider here would be um, first and foremost uh, stacking these. So we can see that the original stacking height is about 61 and a half inch. Um, the total truck height right here was 92.5. So uh, if I would stack um, about 45 inches uh, on one pallet, I might be able to fit two pallets on top of each other. So that might be um, more efficient doing it that way. So those are some of the considerations you should take when uh, loading pallets into this truck fill. Okay. And again, these pallet loads you can create with Cape Pack. So once we have the um, standard uh, result, you can see here with the setup buttons, that um, you can have a look at different views uh, of that. You can also walk through here with your mouse after you highlight this. Um, so 
we can see the length and the width like so. And then with the uh, control panel, you can show uh, labels or not. So let's go back to the uh, right here. So we can uh, do an uh, outline, control face, and show label. Um, that only works, uh, obviously, for um, specific views, right? So when I'm in a specific view, this is not going to show me what I'm expecting. Um, here I can format, uh, go back to the original uh, panel. So if I would go back to one of the uh, original views and go back to the uh, control panel, uh, then uh, I might be able to see that. Now keep in mind also this is a palette that was imported. So that's the reason why uh, this is not working. If we would be having a, uh, a regular uh, object like a, a regular box, so let's say we, um, we add it, uh, one to here, we would be able to visualize that. Okay, so um, that's a very uh, standard, very uh, basic uh, use case. Let's go ahead and uh, delete that. And uh, to speed up things a little bit, I'm just going to close the interface and start over again, which loads these four standard uh, products in here. And have a look at the um, truck container edit editor wizard. This wizard uh, is available right from the uh, calculation settings, uh, but it's also available if you perform calculations with another algorithm uh, and then go into the software. So you can see here the load editor shows me the container and I can start manually filling it. So not much uh, of a wizard uh, in there, so to speak. Um, also, if we would go to uh, a standard truck film algorithm and do that calculation, we can see our truck here. We can still then access that uh, container load wizard and interact on um, calculations that were previously made. All right, so let's say, for example, here I want to continue adding uh, on this top uh, more of these green boxes, so to speak. Um, we can stay here in this editor. I'll show you how you can manipulate. Now, there's a, a few uh, keyboard shortcuts that are uh, available here, and, and uh, I would uh, recommend to use the help menu and uh, to go into the working with the load editor uh, section right there. Um, this explains, you know, uh, the different keyboard shortcuts that you have to your availability when placing object and stacking them in this three-dimensional uh, space using the page up, page down, arrow key left and right, uh, down arrow deleting. If you want to delete uh, using shift, the alt key and the control key, each of those has a specific meaning. And then here you can familiarize yourself with how to move an object, how to lift it, how to fine tune, rotate, delete, clone uh, objects and uh, creating gaps here in between. So it really um, explains all this in detail. Now, I'm a little handicapped because I have this um, very slick, uh, small uh, Macintosh, Apple, uh, I should say, Apple uh, keyboard and an Apple mouse. Um, so I don't have um, as much as the functionality that you might have on a traditional Windows keyboard or Windows mouse. The first thing that you would do is you would uh, open up the object select box where you can see the different uh, SKUs, the different uh, objects that were loaded in the interface. So currently I have the little green box selected. And then I have obviously three additional options available to select it uh, on the nine inch height, the 12 inch turn it or turn it on the 14 inch axis. So if I keep it on the nine inch axis like that, uh, I now have it selected and I can now place it. So I can place it here in this uh, 3D view or I could place it here in this bird's eye view by um, simply uh, selecting it, clicking it uh, and, and placing it. Okay, so 
different different ways uh, here you can see I'm I'm selecting the yellow one the one underneath so uh, to place you would have uh, to use the place uh, option here the features uh, described earlier so moving existing ones um, you can do by uh, selecting one or multiple so selecting multiple you can do by uh, dragging over these and then moving those um, you can hold up the uh, the keyboard um, to move it so I would recommend let's go and uh, cancel this for a second let's go back and let's uh, delete some of these to show you uh, let's delete this one and that one and then go into our um, editor wizard to show you we hit the calculate button to show you again here with object select box so I got uh, my first one I only have one selected so let's pick the 14 inch so I can simply uh, drop it like so uh, I can move it around uh, I can snap it so I, I feel there is a, uh, a snapping feature I can select the previous one uh, I can hit the up arrow on my keyboard to stack it up in the height so uh, you cannot drag it on top of another one so it really uh, has this uh, this magnetism so to speak where it snaps to uh, previously positioned ones Again, here you can select multiple like I showed earlier stack both uh, at the same time um, so yeah um, rotate delete all these functions are, are available um, with these functionality uh, keys here we can we can uh, we can manipulate the uh, position uh, within the truck so that's uh, centering and then uh, spreading um, spreading those out um, here we can uh, rotate the view so uh, we can also do that here um, then we can see uh, statistics on how many we have stacked uh, here so it's it's really a manual way of um, doing this and then here are some more visualization uh, possibilities for you to see uh, the label uh, number and uh, show it in um, black and white okay and then the uh, the load phase uh, so this would be a great option if you have uh, I would say uh, larger objects like industrial uh, you know machinery components that you want to stack and then just uh, create uh, the final uh, right here save and update and create the final layout okay so that was a specific use case so let's go back to the uh, home screen and as a matter of fact I'm going to close the entire um, software so here's the home screen let's go ahead and close it out and show you here this uh, automation capability in Truckfill starting from an Excel spreadsheet so I can hear you uh, think like well wait a minute where did this uh, Excel spreadsheet come from right well if you dive into your software so typically software gets installed on the C drive in the uh, program file x86 folder and then look for TF213 TF for truck fill uh, right here double click you'll see some uh, folders in here and the uh, examples folder contains these spreadsheets so I have copied and pasted on my desktop because I use it almost every day and I'm using the uh, right here run my full order uh, x64 because I'm uh, running Windows uh, on a 64-bit uh, machine environment okay here's another one that I created and uh, this one uh, has a different focus this is uh, transfer transfer my uh, products so this is yeah let's keep this one open so here you can see a preview uh, that should be enough so uh, this one describes different product uh, types uh, right there keys for product types 
standard boxes, trays, cylinders, and then uh, you have the inch and the metric, um, and uh, you can put those uh, in there. The standard one, this one run my full order, is the one that I have open, so let's have a look at that one. Um, so here you can pick from different trucks. So this, these different trucks right here come from this tab uh, that's, uh, that was created and lists the different trucks. You can refresh this list, which will go to truck fill and make sure it's uh, synchronized. Um, the inch tab allows me to generate the results in inch uh, and pounds in, in imperial, or I could do the same in metric right here. The actual key here, um, so let's do a uh, open uh, 40, I believe I did a 40 dry or C. Yeah, we could do a standard uh, reefer right there. So the products get entered here. So again, if you would have an order entry system or some other software that has the capability of exporting uh, information into Excel, um, you know, you could uh, import that from your third party software. Or you could key this in manually, uh, obviously, but it might be more efficient to uh, investigate if you can connect these two. And then the magic happens here with the run my order truck fill. So essentially this is a visual basic script that is running uh, once you click that button. We're not going to go into detail uh, into this uh, visual basic script right here, but it grabs all the parameters uh, of the input and it reaches out to truck fill and then it uh, calculates uh, and sits there and presents you the final de the final details, the final solution. So it's really that easy, right? So let's do this. Let's click on this, and you can see there it is. So super quick uh, in setup. You can see here I have two uh, trucks, and if we go back to the uh, first screen and uh, we position these side by side, you can see indeed that uh, carton. Carton SB1, drum DR2, drum DR2, end loader, end loader. You get the idea. All the information from the Excel spreadsheet was transferred into the interface and the calculation was uh, done afterwards. So a very uh, powerful way to connect your Excel uh, as an input method for truck fill. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll keep this uh, open for now. So we'll close the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, we don't want to save this, but we'll keep the interface open. To show you some, uh, let's calculate this again, to show you here some uh, reporting capabilities. So uh, you might remember from the first demo that we can use the, uh, let's call this 0318, that we can use the standard create PDF um, report to generate a report right here. Now you can see I've already customized it. Uh, there's some problems here with uh, this little logo on the top, but ignoring that here, we can see all the uh, information regarding this uh, specific uh, truck uh, setup, right? So how can we decide or how can we influence the uh, layout of this report? So, well, Let's start with the basics. So you can select between two different report styles here in Truckfill. We have the classic report style, and then we have the new report style. So let me show you a visual. If uh, we go into help um, right here in the introduction, this shows you what the classic report style looked like. In this version of Truckfill, we introduced a new style um, of report that looks something like this. But that being said, you can still customize those reports. So you would pick the uh, appropriate uh, report and you can come here into uh, page setup. Let me see here again, what uh, did I select right now? So report style, 
uh, classic. So yeah, also a little FYI, the classic report style allows for more editing. The new report style is a little more um, rigid, so, so to speak, if that's the proper word. So this does not allow you to do uh, as much editing as you can in the classic. So let's start with the classic one, and then go into page setup. And you can see here you have um, different options that allow you to customize the output. Uh, remember the little uh, Bart Simpson logo right there? Um, I activated this toggle and then I simply loaded right here uh, my image. Keep in mind this needs to be a bitmap, a 256 um, color bitmap. Uh, so using your standard uh, image editing software you can always convert that to a bitmap. We can set, uh, so let's not show that for now. You can decide whether or not you want to show all this information here. I have added uh, an additional one line uh, of text here in my report saying for additional questions around this, call me at this number. Uh, so if somebody who's trying to load this truck uh, has some issues, uh, they can always give me uh, a buzz. And then also here, uh, you have the possibility to edit these additional six lines. So I just put a um, valid until date in here. So once we customize that, then we go into the uh, preview, uh, for example, and we, uh, we do the full order. Um, you can see here all the information that I entered. So the one line right there. Uh, remember, I removed the uh, logo for now. And then uh, you can see here, this is an eight page document because it is a full report. So you can go through the different uh, reports here and see what that looks like. Okay, so that uh, is a way for you to automate. Um, now there is one more uh, option here in Truckfill that allows you to, to create custom reports. All right, so if uh, neither the uh, new report or the classic report style uh, appeals to you, you can come in here and you can start creating your own templates. Now these are based on Word templates. And you can see here, I have a standard one in there called TF Truckfill Report New Dot Dot. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and well, again, question is where are these located and how can I create new ones? Well, let's head on back to the uh, Windows Explorer and um, you go into the CUS RPT custom report folder and in here depending on the version of Word that you're using you will find that specific report. Okay so this is the one we just saw. Um, let's go ahead and open that so let's uh, fire up uh, Word here to show you how you can build your own report. and open that report up in Word. I might still have it sitting uh, here in my favorites. There you go. So that is what this report looks like. Now, here, um, here's the first thing you need to do in uh, File, uh, in Options. You wanna make sure that in the Customize ribbon, you activate the developer option right here. So by default, it's uh, disabled and that will display this developer. So make sure it's enabled and that will display this developer menu. Um, so that for uh, being able to visualize that, uh, once you're in the developer, you also want to go into the uh, macro security and you want to go ahead and enable all macros. So these are macros that are part of this basic template uh, and that need to be uh, run. So uh, you could also uh, display the others, but then you will be getting these warnings. So after doing this, you'll see that um, you have access here to, again, similar to the Excel, to this uh, Visual Basic uh, script that um, says right here, Cape One. And this is a script that's responsible for creating that report. 
Now, the way it works is the following. So you can already see here, um, table one, table two, product. Uh, let's focus on table two. So what is table one and table two? Well, as you start creating these, uh, you just use the standard um, design layout uh, feature to create uh, a table. So this table has one, two, three columns. You can see it. Uh, this is the first uh, cell, the second cell, the third cell. This is the second row, first column, and so on and so on. Okay, so this one here is going to be the uh, second table, and this is the one uh, that will contain my product length, width, and height, net weight, gross weight. Okay, so if I show you back uh, the um, Visual Basic script, you can see here the fill out table two product. Uh, you can see here table two, cell two comma two. So that is exactly this cell right here, right? So uh, second column, uh, second row, all right? And then uh, the width right here is uh, the uh, second row, third column, second row, fourth column, second row, fifth column, and so on. So the first um, column, this one, uh, I am going to fill with a parameter right here that's called S-line 14. So I can actually type in the parameter that I want to display in this specific box by putting that uh, number in there, right? So when I make these, this is how I indicate where that parameter goes. Okay, now the parameters themselves represent different, uh, and I'm gonna have to search here uh, for a second, uh, bear with me. So this document explains those different uh, parameters to you. So let me know if uh, you would need this. This is part of the uh, help. You'll find this in the help or on ESCO dot com support as well um, and this document explains to you uh, other the fact than uh, right here how to uh, create these uh, by the way you can also do uh, XML output and ASCII output um, but down here is where you will find the list of here we go the list of uh, parameters Right, so S line 14 right there, product length, 15, width and height, net weight, gross weight. So all the parameters that TruckFill generates are listed here, including um, truck parameters like axle support, uh, net weight, gross weight, uh, boundaries between those, product name, product height. So all these parameters are available to you to use in the Word document when you create that, okay? And then once uh, you save it as a template, a DOT file, a Word template, um, we've already created it, then you can come back uh, in here and you will be able to generate that uh, right here using your custom Word template. So you could build different templates for your different uh, customers and so that way uh, they would be customized and then executing it is really as simple as um, clicking on that specific template and let's save it here as uh, 0318 on the desktop and in the background the uh, macro uh, will start and then uh, if I look uh, on my desktop right here uh, 0318 here is my final output. So now I could go ahead and print from uh, here. Okay, uh, turn it into a PDF or uh, what have you. So you can see that the software indeed uh, took all these uh, parameters that I told and basically uh, entered them in those fields that I set up earlier. So that is how you can create custom reports in TruckFill.
So uh, in this episode, we covered a few additional um, use cases. We had a look at the single product um, fill wizard. We looked at the truck container editor wizard, allowing you to manually uh, stack your truck. And then we had a look at the automation capabilities, starting from this Excel spreadsheet, uh, a great way to bring in your data and have truck fill calculated. And last but not least, we had a quick overview of how we can create custom reports and uh, use the two standard reports in Truckfill. We'll see you at a next demonstration. Thank you.